Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to share a quick special invitation from my mentor, Amy Porterfield. Take it away, Amy. I wanted to invite you to a free one hour training. I'm hosting it live and I'll lay out exactly how to build and launch a profitable digital course in a low stress, no fuss kind of way, even if you're starting from scratch. So it's going to be highly interactive, meaning lots of questions answered and even ideas workshopped together right there on the spot. And it will help you understand exactly what creating and marketing a digital course takes. So I'm offering a few different training time options, again, all live. So just go to the link in the show notes of this podcast episode, the one you're listening to right now, and I want you to choose the time that works best for you. Now, it's totally free. And here's the thing, show up live. It's worth making the time. When you show up live, it's just a, a little extra magic happens. You're, you're more engaged. You're more willing to like open your heart and your mind around this. So give yourself that time to show up so we can do this together. And here's the thing. If you're still worried about the time it will take to create your course or task overwhelm, or you're not sure what growing an audience is going to look like or how much cost or technology is required, I'm breaking it all down. So you're crystal clear and you really understand the process so that overwhelm is no longer part of the equation. You're going to walk away thinking, I'm not available for this overwhelm anymore. It's not even a factor. That's my goal. So I promise that after our time together, you'll have action items spelled out for you so that you don't have to second guess and you can get started. I want you to be the next Corinne or Raya or Belle or Kevin. Well, actually. I just want you to be you, and I want you to believe that this is doable. But I do want to brag about you in another podcast and talk about how you didn't think you could do this, but you took action and it changed everything. Like, I want to talk about your juicy revenue numbers. I want to talk about what you've done with your course. So my friend, please, please let me brag about you on my next podcast like this. So I've loved being here. So thank you for letting me kind of nerd out on all things digital courses. And I hope to see you at the free training. And if you need it one more time, the link to save your seat for this free digital course training, it's in the show notes. So go grab that link and I'll see you there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye for now. So to join us in this masterclass, go to crystalprofit.com forward slash no fuss. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash N-O dash F-U-S-S. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash no fuss. And I will see you there. All right, let's get into today's episode. How do you get your podcast in front of more people? That is the question that we are answering today with a few questions from the community. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach you how to start, launch, and market your content with confidence. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of content creation, this is the show that will help be your time-saving shortcut. So let's get right to it, shall we? Well, hello, and welcome back to another episode of The Profit Podcast. If we have not met before, hello, I am Crystal Profit. I am your podcast coach and content strategist. And today we are talking about growing your podcast. Now, this could look like podcast marketing, podcast promotion, like there's a few different ways that we could like label exactly what it means. But at the end of the day, what we're talking about is getting your content in front of more people. And I like to tell people that I am your content therapist, helping you work on your relationship with your content, whether it's your podcast, your YouTube channel, your email list, your what you're posting on your website, like however you want to define content. But at the end of the day, I want you to really do this with confidence. And marketing is one of those places where so many of you are like, oh, Crystal, <laughs> I don't feel confident in this area. I struggle to talk about my own stuff. It feels salesy. It feels braggy. It feels icky, weird. I mean, I've heard all of the ways that people describe marketing. And for me, it 
encourages me. I mean, the first feeling that I have when people tell me they struggle with marketing is like, it doesn't have to be so hard. But the other thing is, is I get so motivated because I hope that you can listen to this podcast and consume this content that we're talking about here today and be motivated that one, it's not just you, everyone struggles with this, but two, you can really get into that creative mindset of figuring out what works best for you. This is the key thing here today because I'm gonna share some strategies with you and then you may say, well, but Crystal, that doesn't work for my audience or that won't work for my show or I wanna do it this way, not that way. So this is like the number one thing that we say around here is when it comes to creating content, there are no rules. Yes, there are guidelines. Yes, there are strategies that you can use, but if at any time something doesn't work for you, that's okay. You can try something else or you can just say, you know what? That was an experiment. It didn't work. We're moving on to something else. So don't sit there and beat yourself up for the things that you've tried in your content that haven't worked. Just look at it as a phase of your content creator journey that you're gonna say, I did a lot of learning there and that's it. Like, I know that sounds so silly, it's so simple, but it's sometimes the message that we need to hear. And I know so many of you know this, but as your coach, I feel obliged to remind you and tell you that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay that you tried this one strategy and it didn't work out for you. And it's okay that you know you decided to invest maybe dozens of hours in something that never panned out, you never got any results from it, it's okay. It's totally fine. Y'all, I have been here since 2018 talking about podcasting, talking to business owners, and really diving into the headspace that so many of y'all are at. And marketing is something that everyone continues to struggle with even myself, and that's why I really wanted to talk about it today because with the rise of AI and really the shift in the online business space in the last few years, I feel like it's one of those things that what worked six months ago may not work for you today, or what worked six weeks ago may not work for you today. And so the thing that I really want you to like, lock and load it in your brain and keep it there anytime you start doubting if what you're doing is quote working or not, you need to just say, you know what? I'm trying this out. I'm experimenting. Crystal gave me permission to experiment and try things with my content and that's what I'm doing and I'm gonna keep doing that until I find something that works. That's really what it, this is all about today is finding that thing that will work for you. But I told you I'm gonna actually get into um, some questions. I had two specific questions I wanna address today and this is a great time to plug. We have a free Facebook group. So the Profit Podcast online community, if you are not there, go there right now, like pause this recording and go check it out because this is a place for you to network and connect with other creators that are talking about podcasting. They're talking about growing their business. They're talking about what they're doing on YouTube. And it's just a great place to have conversations about your content. So we'll have a link to it in the description, but go check out our free Facebook group. But there was actually a time when I like called out to people and I'll do this every once in a while. I was like, I take a request for questions. Like if you have a specific question you want answered on the show, then ask away. I want to answer your specific question. So if you want to get a shout out for your show, then make sure you are asking it. But I wanna go to the first one that we had today. So the first one is from Chelsea. So shout out to Chelsea. It says, hi, Crystal. I'm seeking advice on cross-platform content marketing. I have a Buzzsprout web page along with numerous Instagram ready posts. As I'm initiating my marketing efforts, would you provide some solid steps on the most effective effective approach for starting and efficiently, if, yeah, efficiently, I was thinking effectively, efficiently, effectively, it's kind of the same thing, right? Distributing marketing content. Thank you. Shout out the Ed You Well podcast. So thank you so much, Chelsea, for submitting your question. This is fantastic. And I wanna just like start off by saying again, this is one of those things that we're gonna talk about some stuff. Some of it's gonna make sense for everyone. Some of it's gonna make sense for like two people and we're just gonna go with it. But Chelsea mentioned Buzzsprout 
If you did not already know this, I love Buzzsprout. You can go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Buzzsprout. I'm a proud Buzzsprout creator. I've been with them since the very beginning on my podcast journey. But since she brought it up, I am here to tell you like breaking news. I feel like we need like a breaking news, like news flash banner. I just got an email from the Buzzsprout team, like as of me recording this, and they made a big update to Buzzsprout web pages. So uh, I have some content that I can share too about how to set up a website for your podcast. Even if you don't have like a regular website, you can just host your show on Buzzsprout and you can have like even um, a URL for it. So I have the pottyreport.com. This is a podcast I did for about three years. If you go to the pottyreport.com, that points you directly to my Buzzsprout website for this podcast. So you can go check that out. But, 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 but before you do that, I want to show you, like, I, can I be the first to show you? Because like I said, this is brand new and I'm so stinking excited about it because what the folks over at Buzzsprout did is they just did a makeover. This is like the big reveal. Did y'all watch like Fixer Upper with Chip and Joanna Gaines? <laughs> like... I love the reveal. Like I, I'm that type of person where I'm almost in tears, almost crying whenever they're like about to pull, you know, they pull the, the sheet back or the, you know, they pull the thing apart. What is it? Like a billboard that they make that has like the old version of the house and the new version and the homeowners are so like, I'm such a sucker for a reveal. Okay. So Bear with me because I'm about to do a big reveal and we are going to show you, we, me, I'm going to show you exactly what the new version of the Profit Podcast looks like for Buzzsprout. Okay, so I do have my own website. If you go to crystalprofit.com forward slash podcast, that is hosted on my website, crystalprofit.com, but I will actually, and we'll link to it here. I will send people to my Buzzsprout podcast page whenever I know I'm going to be in front of a group of new people. So if they're like, you know, I have an opportunity to get a bunch of people to subscribe and follow, like you can do that directly from this page, which is what I think is so cool, but it's so pretty. It's so stinking pretty. And all I had to do was go in and make sure it had brand colors that I wanted because previously it had the, uh, I have like this teal, like, I don't know. It's like an aqua teal, baby blue, like Robin's eggs. Like I'm not great with colors, but (laughs) it has like, this is one of my main brand colors. And I had selected that for where it says episodes and like all these buttons. Newsflash. It does not look good. You can barely read anything. So I changed it all to black, but you can actually sit here. Oh, let's type in marketing. Okay. And it's going to pull up so many of my episodes that have marketing in the title. They're in the subtitle. So if you have a Buzzsprout website, you could use this strategy too to be able to share out specific episodes or just to tell people like, hey, you can go check out my website here and then they can search and look for all of this. But people can actually follow, subscribe, all the things. And I even have social websites on here too. So I have my actual website, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. But you could just do so many fun things here. So again, Chelsea, I'm glad that you brought this up because she started the conversation, okay? I just want to go back to, she started this, okay? And I just, I wanted to show that because I didn't want to, I didn't want to sit on it, right? Anytime I get like a really fun thing, like I feel like I have to share it here. But I want to go back to what she said. I have a Buzzsprout webpage along with numerous Instagram ready post. As I'm initiating my marketing efforts, could you provide some solid steps on most effective a most effective, see, I did it again, effective approach for starting and efficiently distributing marketing content. Chelsea, the number one thing that I'm going to tell you as someone who is obsessed, obsessed with branding and marketing is you must have branded content. Now I have a guide. It's a little old, but I'm going to go ahead and like link to it. And it, it's a, It was for 2023, but I still think it's perfectly relevant. So I sent out a brand guide to my audience. And what it is, it will show you how to build out a brand for your podcast. If you have not done this already, it's not too late. This is a crucial step that you can take at 
any point of your journey. But what I mean by having something that's branded is you have the same fonts, you have the same colors, you have images that align with what you're doing. So where I see people really mess up is they have this incredible message that they want to share. And then when I go to their website or I go to their Instagram, I'm really confused by the stock images that they use. Cause I'm just like, um, you're talking about, let's say baseball, but you're sharing pictures of farming on here. Like the two are not the same and they don't connect in my brain unless you're a farmer who likes to play baseball. And then I think about Field of Dreams and Kevin Costner. You see what I'm saying? Like it can get really confusing very fast. So it is so important, it's crucially important to have a brand guide for your content. And you can absolutely do this with ChatGPT. And I actually did this earlier this year. I wanted to put together a voice guide for Profit Media. So this is not just my podcast, this is for everything. This is my website, my podcast, my YouTube channel, Instagram, anything that is under the Profit Media umbrella, it has to fit through these guidelines. And I actually shared this with my video editor, Jay. We've talked about him multiple times on here, but he said this was so stinking helpful to share this out with him because he got my brand so much faster. When we first started working together, I sent it to him and I said, hey, Jay, you know, like this might be a little over the top because it felt a little extra to me. <laughs> it did. It felt like, oh my gosh, just a little extra. And he was like, this is incredible because what it said high level was here are our fonts that we use. Like here's our brand guide. And I created this in Canva. This is not something that's like, you know, rocket science. It's something I created in Canva. You could go on a Canva template. They have templates for a brand guide. But I say, these are our fonts. These are our colors. These are our logos that we use a lot. So for, I have a Crystal Profit logo. I have Profit Podcast, Profit Podcasting, all of my courses. Like here's all the important logos that you need plus all the colors, the fonts, everything. And then also had like a do's and don'ts for the brand guide because there are very specific things that I've seen other creators do that I'm like, ooh, I wouldn't have done that. Or ooh, that did not look good with their brand. So let's make a mental note to not do that with mine. And one thing that I did not want to happen was handing off a part of my editing and it not reflect the principles and the values of what I do for my show or what I want the message of the show to be. And that is we are an inclusive show, like regardless of race, gender, age, like ability, or even experience. Like I want to make sure that we, rep we represent the community that is here within the Profit Podcast. So it is in my brand guide. And I know we're kind of getting off track about like promotion and stuff, but this stuff is important. This is very, very, very important because when you have a brand guide that tells you step by step, and even if it's just for you, it's not for you to share with teammates and other people, it is just for you. It's really important because within that brand guide, you can see very clearly the other brands that we would align with or the other creators that we would want to engage with and interview and promote and cross promote and all those other things. It's very clear, like the writing's on the wall, the writing is in my brand guide, who we can really partner with and be strategic with and who we can't. So I've gone on multiple rants on this podcast about people that pitch me, right? This is in my email. I get cold pitches probably five to six every single day, every single day. I'm getting pitches in my emails, whether it's for SEO for your YouTube channel or someone to edit your podcast clips. Like, I mean, it's just, it's obnoxious how many I get. And I can tell you very quickly that so many of them do not align with my brand. It's the language that they use. It's the spammy nature that they're using. You know, we talked about being spammy earlier. They don't have great marketing strategies. They don't have great marketing tips. But I will say when they do, I will respond to them and say, this was an incredible one. I actually have an email. I'll have to find it and put it up here. There was an email of someone that reached out to me and it was a cold marketing email. It was so good. 
It was so stinking good. And the reason why I know it was so good because I had so many bad ones, so many bad ones. And I responded to her and I said, hey, I don't need your services right now, but I just want to tell you how much I appreciate the research, the dedication, the clear, clear dedication that you put into this pitch because it was so good. And she responded back, like, oh my gosh, like this made my day, it made me feel so good. So all of that to say, work on your brand guide and you can use ChatGPT. I mentioned this earlier, I did this and I just tell ChatGPT, hey, you know, you're know, you my marketing expert, you're my chief marketing officer and we need to create a brand guide for your name of your show, the name of your brand, whatever. And then you can tell it, ask me all the questions that you need me to answer to create this brand guide. And when I did this, I answered one question at a time and it eventually, it was like, you know, who's your audience? What do you do? Who do you serve? How do you serve them? What does it look like to work with you? What do you stand for? What are you all about? And we ended up coming with this incredible, incredible, like I feel like I would have paid someone thousands of dollars to make this brand guide for profit media, but it's what I go back to time and time again. So again, I know we're talking about cross promoting today and really getting in front of other audiences, but until you know what your brand is about, it's not going to be helpful to even, even if I sent you in front of 50, like a, a content creator that has 50,000 followers tomorrow, if they're not aligned with your brand or they don't have your audience, that audience isn't going to care. Trust me. I have done that before. I have had people say, do you want to get in front of my audience of 350,000 Instagram subscribers or 100,000 YouTube subscribers? And I'm like, oh my God, this is this is it. This is the opportunity. This is what's going to make my channel take off, my business take off. I'm going to be a millionaire tomorrow. And that doesn't happen. Why does that not happen? Because the brand the partner, the collaboration, whoever I was working with did not align with who I was trying to talk to. It did not make sense for my brand, but I did not know that because I hadn't done the research. I just thought eyeballs are eyeballs. Getting in front of more people is just the way to go. It doesn't matter if it's not aligned. It doesn't matter. It does matter. It does matter. It really, really matters actually. So you want to make sure that you have your brand guide done, that you know exactly the type of audience that you're trying to get in front of, then we can talk about marketing. So I know, super long-winded like way to say, like if you haven't gone back to marketing basics one-on-one, -on -one, this is your reminder to do it. Get AI to help you, have ChatGPT, have Canva help you design all of these brand guides. But like I said, we have a brand guide that we're gonna link to and we'll make sure that you get that in your hands because it is super, super helpful. So once you have all of that done, now we can actually move on to the marketing efforts, right? So you have your Buzzsprout webpage. I recommend this, okay? And it's a little extra lift. Get a domain and point to that Buzzsprout like webpage. It shouldn't be like buzzsprout.com forward slash this, a bunch of numbers, a bunch of letters. Like it, no, 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 no. Either get a short link. So I use pretty links to create all my short links. And I want you to create something like that or use a bit.ly or short URL, tiny URL. Like I feel like there's a million of these different platforms that do that. Or I have a YouTube video that I'm a link to that shows you how to buy a domain and connect it to your Buzzsprout webpage. Because if you're gonna be telling people where to go, you can't be saying all the time, go to buzzsprout.com forward slash this and a whole bunch of random numbers and let No, 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 it's not pretty. You can't remember all those numbers and letters. Your audience is gonna see that and be like, mm, I'm not doing that, that's way too, no, that's too much. So have it be very easy for your audience to come hang out with you, to come follow you, to come listen to your show. It will help you immensely because it's not as much of a heavy lift. Like it's easy. Let's make it easy for them. Do you not just love it whenever you stumble upon a creator that has their stuff together and all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, boom, I can follow them. Oh, what other resources? Oh, look, here's their podcast. Oh, boom. Oh, it's playing in my player in less than 10 to 15 seconds. I just found them. I see they have a podcast. I can click on it and boom, I'm listening to an episode, their latest episode. 
Whenever you make it easy for people to follow you, you are going to have more people likely to come follow you and come hang out with you. So many of you have way too many steps in your process and we call this the customer journey, right? It's like you have uh, five different links that they have to click through or you're just trying to get them on your email list. So it's like, no, 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 I don't want them to go anywhere except for this lead magnet. But then once they get on your email list, is it in your welcome sequence? Like that very first email, hey, this is how you listen to my show or that you know thank you page that you have right after your lead magnet. So many of you have really, really good intentions with using your content to help you grow your online business, but you've also lost some of the simplicity that comes from really getting people to just engage and interact with you. You're trying to get to that first sale. You're trying to get them to get that email, you know, like, give me your email address. That's really all I want. And then shut up and go away. And then I'll send you an email and then buy something from me. Like, <laughs> hold up, time out. We need to remember that every download, every email, every subscriber, that's a person, okay? Like, I feel like that needs to, we need to take a pause and remember that. Every download, every email, every subscriber, those are people on the other side of your screen. And if you have not thought about that lately, I want you to think about that. Like, go look at your Instagram. Like, how many people are following you? Those are real people right? Go to your YouTube channel. How many people are on there? Those are real people. How many are on your email list? Those are real people. How many are in your Facebook group? Like, I, I could just go on and on and on. How many downloads are you getting? Like, those are real people. Okay. This is so important. And I know I'm like really harping on this issue, but I think it gets lost so much in, um, I just want more. I just want more. I want more people. I want to get to a million downloads. I want to get to a hundred thousand downloads. I want to get to my first 10,000 downloads, like whatever that is. And it's almost like I'll do it at any cost. And I'm like, when was the last time you talked to someone in your audience? When I ask people that and they say, uh, I don't talk to people in my audience. I'm like, that's your first biggest missed opportunity. And I heard this the other day, I'm trying to remember which podcast it was, but they were talking about, you know, how when you have an existing client base or you have an existing followership or subscriber base, right? You have these people that are already wanting to learn from you. Maybe they've already bought from you. And then you're trying to get all these new people. It's actually so much cheaper, like astronomical percentages cheaper for you to serve this original customer than it is to get new ones. So I always make sure that I've like got my original people, right? Look, those OGs that have been around for a while, like I wanna make sure I'm making them so happy that they're sharing it with other people. They are actually taking their phones out, hitting those three dots, like clicking that share button and texting my podcast to someone else. Do you know how many steps that takes? <laughs> Can we just be real for a second? I've been on a kicks where I'm obsessed with houseplants recently. Obsessed. Like totally obsessed. Like my husband is so sick of me sending him these Instagram reels of creators that are doing all these things with houseplants. I'm like, oh, we should do like a whole wall of plants over here. And we could do this over here with these houseplants. Like, do you know how much harder it is for me to copy that link and actually text it to my husband? Because I don't want him to see it next time he opens up Instagram. Yeah, I can DM him all day and send it to him, but he, I know he doesn't have his notifications turned on. I want him to see it now. So I will copy the link and I will text it to him. That's how much I want him to see the piece of content that this creator made. And that's what I want my audience to do. I want them to hear something really profound in an episode, on a YouTube video, on a short, in an Instagram reel, like wherever I'm creating content to the point to where they are stopping their scroll. They're stopping what they are doing, clicking that share button and sending it to someone else. When was the last time you asked your audience to do that? Have you ever asked your audience to do that? Whether you're a brand new podcaster, a brand new creator, or you've been doing this for a long time, like these are marketing strategies that you can try. Today, you can explore this today. And if it doesn't work, hey, you experimented. Remember what we talked about earlier? We're on this experimentation journey. Like if it doesn't work out, hey, that's okay. It was an experiment. We just tried it out. So 
I want you to try that today. I want you, the next time you create a piece of content, ask people to like and share what you are creating. Actually, this is a perfect opportunity for me to say, if you have found value in any of the content I created, will you like and share it with one person? One person, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's leaving us a review for the podcast, like will you share it with one person because it makes a difference? So again, we wanna get our eyeballs, you know, or get in front of more eyeballs and get, you know, like I want my audience to blow up. I wanna have this big sensational burst and I wanna be like on the scenes, overnight success, like all the things. But in reality, we need to make sure we're taking care of the people that are with us now, today, right now. So if you haven't done that in a while, I wanna make sure that you're doing that. This is not just to Chelsea, this is to everybody that wants to know how to be a better marketer, have a brand guide, make sure you have that one-on-one basics down, but then also make sure you're really serving the people that are in your audience today and ask them to share it, all right? Baseline, we have to get that covered first. But the next question, so this was a question from Chelsea, but just today when I was preparing to do this episode, I had another question and it was so good. And this was from a brand new member of our community. And she said, I really want to increase my downloads per episode right now. I'm averaging about 30 episodes or yeah, 30 per episode. So 30 downloads an episode for the first week, which is the top 50%. Okay, if you did not know this, Buzzsprout has a global stats dashboard where they will show you on hundreds of thousands of episodes or hundreds of thousands of podcasts where you land depending on how many downloads you get in the first seven days. And yeah, if you're getting 30 or more, you're in the top 50%. That's wild, right? Like, I hope I just like blew your mind that, oh my gosh, like I'm getting more than 30. I'm in the top 50% because it's it's so cool. But anyway. Back to her, back to your question, which I know is a top 50%, but how do I get to top 10%? I need like 500 downloads a week. Yowza. Any tips? Uh, I know this probably is not a quick fix. And so what I said to her, because again, like anytime you ask a question in the Facebook group, I like to answer the question. And then if I'm going to shout it out here, I'll shout it out here. But this is what I said to her. Great question. There's a few strategies to try. One, email your list the day that an episode comes out to increase downloads when a new episode is published. So if you have an email list, they actually have a convert kit has this really cool feature. And I'll link to this video where you can do your RSS feed. Like, so through Buzzsprout, I could create an RSS feed that will pull in my episode description. It pulls in my episode title, my episode description of what's in Buzzsprout. And it creates a draft email that I could essentially automatically send to my audience every Tuesday when a new episode drops. I haven't enabled this feature fully, but I did create a video about it. And I think it is fascinating for those of you that want to have like an automatic, like, how do I get, you know, email to my list? This is a great way to do it. And you could just have you know, boom, like you could draft it, like make it so pretty. You could do all these templates. Like we could, if you want to know more about that, like tell me in the comments, cause that's a whole other rabbit hole that we could go down. But I want to move on. The second thing that I suggested is post on social media the day an episode goes live, which I'm sure so many of you already do. You're creating podcast clips. You're creating maybe sound bites. Buzzsprout has sound bites. If you haven't checked that out, we have a video about that as well. The third one is if it's an interview, ask your guests to share with their audience. And even the person posting this came back and said, yeah, I usually do. You have to make this so seamless for the person. Like spoon fed, hand holding, like this is on a silver platter, X, Y, Z of what I need you to do. Because what happens so often is people will come to me, even episodes I've been on, and they're like, your episode's live. And I just think, okay, cool great, that episode's live. And to be honest, I'm usually really busy when I see that. And I'm like, oh, great. I'll get around to looking that up and finding it, all the things. No, 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 no. Silver platter time. You have to legitimately say, hey, podcast host name or podcast guest name, 
Your episode is live today. I have a template, I have an SOP actually that my VA and I created for this. And what it says, it's literally a copy and paste email and I customize it depending on the guest. And I'm saying, hey, your episode is live today. Here is the link to the show notes. Here is a sound bite and here is an image attached to it. We will also send you the link of the YouTube video whenever it is live. Please share this with your audience. It is literally step by step, this is how you can help promote this episode and not just your episodes live, because if you don't give them the content and the materials to share that out to their audience, then why would they? Why would they? What I do whenever someone sends me that, they're like, hey, your episode is live. I will link to it in my weekly Friday newsletter. And I have this section at the bottom that says new resources this week. And I will say, hey, I was on the e-commerce made easy podcast with Carrie Saunders. You know, here's the YouTube thumbnail because she sent it to me and I will link out to her YouTube video. Or if she said, hey, link to the website. Cool. I'll link to the website and it'll go out there. But she made it so easy for me to share it. And I think it's one of those that we often miss is we can't just tell people, oh, your episode's live. What do I do with that? I don't, I, where do I tell people to go? Where do I go? Is it on YouTube? Should I tell people to go to Apple? Should I tell them to go to Spotify? Should I send them to your website? Like, where should I tell my people to go? And if there's too many decisions for me to make, it's probably not going to happen. I'm, I'm probably not going to promote it. So I'm just like, it's one of those just tough love things that I got to throw out there for you. But To wrap this up, the fourth thing that I suggested is ask your audience to share, which we already talked about here today. So two fantastic questions, and I'm going to have, uh, I have some other additional resources that we didn't get to today that are just a recap. I have so many. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six other marketing episodes that I want you to check out either on the podcast or on YouTube, wherever you prefer to, you know, have your content, but At the end of the day, I want you to remember it is a journey. It is an experiment. If something doesn't work out, that is okay. It is okay to have something not be an overnight success because none of us are overnight successes, right? Like the people behind the scenes that are quote overnight successes usually have so much work that they've already done. So I want you to be prepared when that overnight success opportunity comes your way because you have been doing the work, you have your brain guide, you have an audience that is so ready to cheer you on and promote what you're doing because you're creating awesome content and you have a coach and a community of resources to help you along the way. So this was such a fun episode. I wanna do a fan mail shout out because we haven't done one of these in a while. So let me go back and see, this is the one, yes, okay. This is one that I'm gonna come, have to come back to, so, because this is, this is another episode I wanna make, so I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Let's go back and do this. Okay, this is from Oklahoma, so Oklahoma City, shout out, I don't know who sent this to me. It says, hey KP, loved your chat GPT episode. We've been testing it as a third virtual host on the show, and she learns the style so well. It's crazy fun. I have gone nuts. I don't know who said this, but I love it so much. So you have a third host on your show using ChatGPT. If you have not watched or listened to that episode, you have to go check it out. I interviewed with ChatGPT on the podcast, and it was so much fun. So thank you from Oklahoma, whoever sent this. If you want to have someone, or you want to have me, you know, read your fan mail, you want to shout out on the podcast, then where you're listening on the audio version, it says send crystal a text message. Please click that link. You will be able to text me directly and you can have your fan mail shouted out on an upcoming episode. But that's all I have for you today. This was so fun. If you have any other marketing questions, put them in the comments below or let us know by sending us a fan mail shout out. And as always, remember, Keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey. 
Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.